and welcome to another episode of Access Ability. I'm your host Laura, I'm an animated depiction of a white woman with bright blue hair, shaped on one side, wearing a black leather jacket, black t-shirt and black jeans. I also have bright blue bunny ears. When Microsoft released the Xbox Adaptive Controller almost four years ago, it marked the first time a mainstream console manufacturer had made a push for a console to officially support an accessibility controller that was affordable and modular. Supporting 3.5mm connector and USB ports for connecting peripherals, the controller allowed for first party and third party buttons, switches, joysticks and pedals to be incorporated into a controller setup to make it easier for disabled players to play games in ways they found accessible. Most accessibility controllers released in the years since, such as the Hori Flex, have followed a similar design concept to the Xbox Adaptive Controller, consisting of a base unit that contains some of the primary controller buttons, as well as a multitude of ports for additional peripherals to be connected. One recently released accessibility controller has been designed with a very different approach in mind. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about the 8-bit Do Lite SE accessibility controller for Switch, Android and Raspberry Pi. We're going to talk about what the controller is designed for, how its functions differ from those of other accessibility controllers, and which groups of gamers might find its design particularly useful. The 8-bit Do Lite SE is an accessibility controller that, rather than centering on a modular design that enables additional components to be attached, is instead aimed at gamers with reduced mobility, reduced hand strength, and fine motor control disabilities. The controller is designed to place all of the traditional buttons onto the face of the controller, rather than any of them being on the rear or sides of the device. The buttons that would traditionally be bumpers and triggers on the controller, for example, are replaced with buttons on the face, next to the D-pad and next to the A, B, X, Y buttons. The rear of the controller is rubberized and flat, allowing it to be placed onto a smooth solid surface such as a table or lap tray, and resist sliding out of place as buttons are being pressed. Unlike some of the existing modular accessibility controllers on the market, the 8-bit Do Light SE does not feature a tripod mount, which would have allowed it to be more dynamically placed in accessibility setups, and is important to note. In addition, for players who struggle not to accidentally activate the L3 and R3 functions of a controller with clickable analog sticks when moving their camera or character around in game, this controller removes the clickable stick functions of a controller entirely, replacing those functions with more traditional buttons on the face of the controller next to the analog sticks. All of the buttons on the face of the controller are close enough together to be theoretically controlled using a single hand with relative ease for many players, and feature reduced resistance in those buttons, so that they can be more easily pressed down by a player who may be stretching a finger to try and reach a button that they're pressing one-handed, or for players with muscle pain or muscle weakness. Having now had the controller in my possession for a couple of weeks, I can certainly see how it fulfills the niche that it's aiming for, but it does take a little getting used to if you are familiar with other, more traditional controller layouts. Its buttons are all very close to each other, and getting over muscle memory to learn these new button placements can be a little bit of a learning curve to get used to initially. That said, I appreciate that this controller is not aiming for the same target demographic as the other accessibility controllers we've discussed on this show. If you're a Switch owner that is looking for a modular accessibility controller, the Hori Flex already exists, even if it's a bit tricky to get your hands on at a reasonable price and it is only really available in Japan right now, and the Xbox Adaptive Controller can fairly easily be tricked into syncing up with the handheld console. There are already a couple of options for modular controller bases on the Switch, and seeing a company try to create something for a different segment of the disabled gamer market is reassuring to see. A lot of the time in video game accessibility, we see one company successfully push forward accessibility with a particular game or product or set of accessibility settings, and other companies tend to fall into the trap of simply trying to emulate what the last company succeeded with, narrowing the scope of what accessibility looks like within the industry. Seeing 8-Bit Do get inventive with the light SE and try to cater to a different segment of the space reassures me that we will continue to see experimentation in a space that 
right now has one clear front runner that people think of, which is what we need to see if accessibility options are going to continue to grow and expand and diversify. Most accessibility focused video game controllers we've showcased here on this channel have, at the end of the day, been vessels for peripherals, as much as they were devices designed to be used in their own right. For most people deciding whether or not to purchase an Xbox Adaptive Controller, for example, the question of whether or not to make a purchase would, at the end of the day, come down to whether other third-party peripherals exist to help make that controller into a setup that might be personally useful. That is not nearly as much the case with the 8-bit Do Lite SE. Because it lacks that modular input support, what you see is what you get. The controller is cheaper than other accessibility controllers on the market, and rather than trying to be useful as part of a wide range of disabled gamers' setups, it's laser focused on a specific use case. If you want a smaller condensed controller where every button is close together and on the face of the controller, where you can lie that controller flat on a table without it sliding around when being used, or without accidentally clicking in an analog stick mid play, then this controller might just be perfect for you. If not, you probably already know that there are more customizable options that, while more pricey, might be more what you're looking for.